Welcome back to our DC Circuit series. Today, we're diving into a special case of nodal and mesh analysis. Supernodes and supermeshes, two powerful techniques that make solving complex circuits much easier. In previous lessons, we explored circuit simplification and analysis methods, including Kirchhoff's current and voltage law. These laws and methods are the foundation of circuit analysis, allowing us to determine unknown voltages and currents. But sometimes circuits can get a little tricky, especially when we introduce voltage sources connected between two nodes or when dealing with dependent sources. We will build on the concepts we've learned so far by introducing supernodes and supermeshes. And as much as this sounds like a CGI overloaded movie, these are just techniques that simplify circuit analysis when dealing with voltage and current sources in nodal and mesh analysis. Before we jump into it, I want to thank Digilent for their continued support with this lesson and the other lessons we've done with them. They have been instrumental in creating these. Okay, so let's get started. To understand supernodes and supermeshes, you need to have a good understanding of nodal and mesh analysis. We've covered these in a previous lesson, so be sure to check out the rest of the series, which has plenty of other worked out examples, particularly the written lessons. And you can find those on circuitbread.com. In nodal analysis, we apply KCL and express currents in terms of node voltages and resistances using Ohm's law. However, there are cases where KCL alone won't help us. If a voltage source is connected between two nodes, we cannot directly apply KCL at those nodes. But why is that? In a branch with an ideal voltage source, the voltage difference between the nodes is already defined. Since the branch has no explicit resistance, we cannot use Ohm's law to determine the branch current. To address this, we use the concept of a supernode, which is formed when a voltage source connects two non-reference nodes. As the name suggests, we treat both nodes as a single node, a supernode, and apply KCL to the entire structure, simplifying the analysis. This looks something like this, where the two non-reference nodes in the circle are clumped together with the voltage source they're connected to. So now, instead of applying KCL separately at each node, we enclose both nodes within a single supernode and apply KCL to the entire supernode. Let's use another circuit as a simple example to understand the process of applying KCL to a nodal analysis circuit with a supernode. I will be going over this at a very high level and skimming over the math significantly. If you want a fully worked out example of a supernode problem, please see our written lesson on circuitbread.com. So we have a circuit with a 12 volt voltage source between two nodes and multiple resistors connected to each. Now, instead of analyzing the two nodes separately, the node above R1 and above R4, we wrap a big circle around them and treat them as a supernode. At the supernode, we still need to write a few equations, and in this case, it will seem like a lot of current coming in and out. We will have I1, I2, and I5 leaving the supernode, with I3 going into the supernode. So we will need an equation that represents that, which is shown, though you would want to put these values in reference to their voltages using Ohm's law. Even though the voltage source is part of the supernode, we still treat it as a separate equation that tells us the voltage difference between the two nodes. We know that VC minus VA equals 12 volts, so it's important to get that equation written out for your calculations. You can create equations for the rest of the nodes in the circuit using our basic KCL approach and then start solving the equations just like any other nodal analysis. The only difference is that there will be one equation that comes from the supernode. So in summary, here's what we did to perform supernode analysis. First, we have to identify the nodes and select the ground or reference node. Second, KCL is applied normally to all nodes except the one with a voltage source between. Third, identify the voltage source between two non-reference nodes and circle all of them, treating them as a single supernode. Fourth, apply KCL to the supernode, considering all currents entering and leaving the supernode. Fifth, use the voltage source equation as an additional constraint. Finally, these sets of equations can then be used to find the node voltages. All right, now let's talk about mesh analysis and supermeshes. Again, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, or mesh analysis. If you are not, please go check out the lesson that goes over this in detail. If I'm smart, I'll remember to put this link in the description as well. Now, even if you know KVL, there are cases where KVL alone isn't sufficient. One such case arises when a current source is shared between two meshes, as the voltage drop across the source is undefined. 
It depends on the unknown internal resistance. To fix this, we use, you guessed it, a super mesh. This is formed when there is a current source between two meshes. Instead of applying KVL separately to each mesh, we exclude the current source and apply KVL to the larger loop surrounding both meshes while using an additional equation to account for the value of each current source. Let's take a look at an example to understand how to apply KVL to a mesh analysis circuit with a super mesh. Just like with the super node example, I'm going to be glossing over the math and focusing on the steps. And if you want to see a fully worked out super mesh example, it's in the same written lesson on circuitbread.com. Here, we are trying to use mesh analysis to calculate V0. Let's start by labeling the meshes and assuming the direction of current flow within them. If you were to start writing out the equations for this problem, you would notice two problems, particularly that I1 and I2 share a current source and I5 and I6 also share a current source. Since the current source tells us the current through it, but not the voltage across it, we can't create an equation that describes I1, I2, I5, or I6. We'll need to create a super mesh around I1 and I2, as well as a super mesh around I5 and I6. To make a super mesh around I1 and I2, we temporarily exclude the current source from our loop and draw a larger loop around I1 and I2. We then treat it like a normal KVL problem when creating our equations. Now, we still use that current source. We need to create another equation to describe I1 and I2, which in this case is I1 minus I2 equals 4 milliamps. Pivoting over to I5 and I6, we do the exact same thing. Get rid of the current source and write the equation that describes the larger loop. Once we've done that, we write the equation showing that I6 minus I5 equals 4 milliamps. With these two super meshes, this gives us the six equations we need to solve for the six unknown mesh currents. At this point, you just need to solve the equations. If six equations seems overwhelming, I recommend you use Gaussian elimination or linear algebra to make this easier. We actually have a linear equation calculator on CircuitBread to help in exactly these types of cases. We even created a lesson specifically to show how to convert this type of problem into something easy to use with a matrix or linear equations calculator. Please go look into those. If you're not familiar with this process, it'll be well worth your time. But now, let's summarize the steps we just went through to perform a super mesh analysis. First, we have to identify all the meshes in the circuit. Second, we apply KVL as usual to each independent mesh except the ones with a current source shared between two meshes. Third, we identify the meshes connected by a current source, encircle them, and form a super mesh by enclosing them within a larger loop, making sure to exclude the shared current source. Fourth, we apply KVL to the super mesh, expressing voltages in terms of mesh currents using Ohm's law. Fifth, the current source value is then used to form additional equations relating the mesh currents directly. Finally, these sets of equations can then be used to find the mesh currents through each mesh. And we're done with super nodes and super meshes. I hope you found this useful to gain a better fundamental understanding of how to solve these special cases in KCL and KVL. By extending nodal analysis with super nodes and mesh analysis with super meshes, we learned how to systematically apply Kirchhoff's laws in circuits, especially while dealing with voltage and current sources or where traditional methods may be challenging. If anything was confusing, we definitely recommend reviewing the written lesson and letting us know in the comments. Again, I'd like to thank Digilent for their continued support in providing accessible and engaging educational resources. Their contributions play a vital role in making electrical engineering concepts more approachable and practical. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. Did you know that circuitbread.com has more than tutorials? One of the other many things that we have are several excellent open source textbooks that benefit from our search tools, highlighting, super fast page changes, and keyboard friendly navigation. Go check them out.